I'm Erin and today on the tech blog we are taking a look at part one of a three-part series that I'm going to be doing on photo printers you can use at home. This one is the Fuji Instax SP2 share printer. It's a small, I guess you could call it a mini printer or a micro printer. It prints small photos about this size and it prints them on what you might call old Polaroid style film. It's a bit confusing because Polaroid, Fuji, kind of two different things. Uh, the long and the short of it is Fuji basically now owns this kind of technology. So these are the prints you get. We're going to take a look at how well this device works, how you get it set up and what kinds of things it's good for. For starters, I would say the setup is not very intuitive. The Instax Share app doesn't really guide you through setup. There's just kind of the app as it's laid out here, and when you go looking for what to do, it doesn't really tell you. Fortunately for me, being a tech blogger comes in handy. I know that you need to first switch on the device, then go to your phone's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth menu, depending on what it connects with. It's Wi-Fi in this case. And wait until you see the device show up in your Wi-Fi menu. Wait till it connects, then you can return to the app and you should be connected. Generally speaking, the app is pretty easy to use and navigate. There's a bunch of settings in it that let you make some changes to the photo, like changing the orientation and adding different filters and effects. The print time is also pretty quick as well. From the time you actually hint the print button until it spits out the photo, it's really only a delay of about 10 seconds. Much like the vintage Polaroid style prints that these resemble, these Fujifilm Instax prints do require some time to develop. So while the picture will print out blank, if you leave it for a couple of minutes, voila! One of the other things I really like about the Fujifilm Instax setup is the variety of films you can get. There's all kinds of different fun borders available. There's black and white film and plain Jane as well. It gives you a lot of versatility. The film cartridges are quite easy to change. You basically just pop open the back of the Fujifilm Instax printer, pop out the old cartridge, and put in a new one. Now, it's worth mentioning that you can't actually switch cartridges before all of the photos have been printed. If you do, you're basically going to ruin two sets of film. That's because those cartridges aren't fully sealed, so light is actually going to bleed into them, and it's going to ruin most of the film that's left inside. One of the great things about the Fuji Instax Share Printer is that there's no ink cartridges to buy. That's because the film develops right on the paper. This is that old school Polaroid film I was talking about, and because the ink is built right into it, there's no ink cartridges to change for the printer. Now with that said, of course, you do still need to buy the special film, so there is a cost there. Another pro of this device, it's got a really long battery life. Fuji says it'll print about 100 photos on one battery charge. I had the printer for about three or four weeks, never needed to recharge it once. One final thing that's worth mentioning about the Instax Share SP2 is that it goes to sleep after about four or five minutes. That means you need to turn it on again and reconnect to Wi-Fi as if you're starting from scratch. It doesn't remember your Wi-Fi network, though it will retain the password, so at least you don't have to sign in. While I found that annoying, it is easy enough to remedy, but it still would be nice if it remembered the Wi-Fi connection. So to the question now of would I buy one of the Fujifilm Instax Share SP2 printers for myself, the answer is a definite yes. I find this device pretty easy to use. I love the vintage Polaroid style films and particularly all of the different little film packets you can get. I think they're super fun. They'd be great for weddings, parties, anniversaries, that kind of thing. Um, aside from the Wi-Fi reconnection issue, which is really annoying, once you get past it, it's pretty easy to figure out. And the Fujifilm app is pretty intuitive and easy to use as well. So for the full written review on this device, you can go to my tech blog, which is techgadgetscanada.com. It's got a lot more detail there than I can provide in this short review. I'm Erin. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at ErinLYYC.